Welcome back. Well, so far we have shown you that gangs and gang violence are a problem in our community, but that city officials and police and school officials are on it. In fact, we talked about a couple of the programs designed to stop the violence. And before we close, we're going to direct you to a special website that will give you all the information you need to help fight it in your own home. But before we leave you, we want to leave you with a thought of hope. There are a lot of former gang members out there. Right now we want you to meet Danny Davis, stage name D1. We want you to meet him because his life story could very well be the message that has the power to steer kids in the right direction. Some of D1's lyrics are a little R-rated for our story, but loosely translated when he raps about going from zero to CEO and making it off the block, he's speaking from experience, referring to changing his life as a kid in trouble and eventually in a gang to the successful artist and businessman he is today. Yeah, it should be number one on there. Yep, yep. Today he runs One Vibe Media, has produced several CDs, three of which are in record stores. He performs all over Las Vegas, California, and Utah. And when he's not working, he's working out and has earned these belts as an amateur kickboxing champion. A lot of people out there, they make a living, you know what I'm saying? But I, I'm living a life. He tells us his life could have very easily been taken away from him during his very turbulent teen years. He walked through his old neighborhood as he explained that the trouble all started at the age of 13. My parents started having some issues in the house. Uh, my mom left, you know, and then me and my dad had some, some turmoil between each other. And uh, that kind of started everything, you know, some trouble in the home. Trouble in the house uh, led to trouble at school. Uh, I mean, I started ditching school, started not going to school at all. He found out about that, um, came up to the school, and uh, he was so mad at me, he actually hit me in the dean's office, you know, and they, they sent me to child saving for a while. He went back to live with his dad, but ran away at 14 and started looking for something to replace his unstable family life. He says that's how a lot of kids end up in gangs, looking for acceptance. Uh, I started finding some friends, you know what I'm saying, who, um, you know, I could relate to, had some similar problems at their home, and they were on the streets too. We started doing what we needed to do to get money and survive, you know, whether it be stealing cars, stealing purses, um, and that's kind of how I got sucked, in, sucked into gangs, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I felt there was a, this group of people who accepted me for who I was and um, welcomed me, you know? So, you know, that, that around 14, I got jumped into a gang. It was all downhill from there, with time served in a youth camp in Caliente and continued run-ins with the law. I felt a little peer pressure, you know what I'm saying? Like, because these older guys who were kind of looking out for me in a way, you know, were doing these things, so I felt like I needed to do, do it too to be cool, you know what I'm saying? It, things like, you know, uh, drinking underage, um, stealing cars, you know what I'm saying, uh, fighting rival gang members, you know what I'm saying, they, they told me, well, th these people don't like us. So to me, I took it that they don't like who my, you know, my current family is, you know, my extended family. So if they're going to try to hurt my family, then I need to protect my family in any way I could, you know what I mean? And, or my, my neighborhood is what we call it, you know, my hood, you know what I'm saying? Then came a life-altering experience, the day he saw someone else's life taken away. Then when I was about 17, you know, right before, uh, around the time I got off a uh, parole from Caliente Youth Center, um, you know, I witnessed two of my friends, you know, got murdered, you know, in a drive-by shooting. I mean, I've been shot at before with the gangs, you know, I've been, the person right next to me got shot and died. I mean, a, a complete stranger just being in the crowd. But this time, you know, it was, friends and you know I was in the car and my friend to the right got shot in the hand the driver you know died and a girl in the street died you know and that just kind of totally shocked me for a second he'd always had a love for music and writing lyrics and that's what he threw himself into as he was pulling himself out of the gang it kind of pulled me away from the streets you know slowly but surely and then I finally found myself engulfed in music 
Breaking away from the gang wasn't easy, but he was determined. He interned at a local studio, took courses in music and business, and worked his way up in the local music industry. He is proof that you can go from running the streets to running your own business. He reaches out to the community a lot these days and tries to tell at-risk kids there is nothing noble or glamorous about gang life. Seeing bullets on TV, you know, you watch a gangster movie and seeing them, that, those are fake, you know what I mean? But in life, you know, one of those hits you is going to hurt, you know, and, and it's, it's not what you make it to be, you know. It, it might seem fun in a way. It might seem, you know, cool in a way, but it's all but that, you know. And he knows that firsthand. D1 made the choice and the transition to leave the nightmare of living on the streets to living the American dream. You know, take a word of advice, you know, from someone who's been through it, you know, and and save yourself some trouble. Come on, let me show you how it works. How we get that paper, how we do that dirt. Come on, let me show you how it works. It's really nice to end on a success story, isn't it? Well, as we told you earlier, there are so many groups and organizations out there to help stop the violence. We only had time to touch on a couple, but we have set up a special link on our website where you can get all kinds of information on prevention and intervention. Just go to lasvegasnevada.gov slash anti-gang. Also, the program you're watching will be seen many more times over the next few months, so you can check out future airings by going to kclv.tv. As we mentioned at the top of this show, there are 8,000 gang members and affiliates. They outnumber our police force, but if we all work together, then we can outnumber the gangs, and maybe that's how we can make a difference. Thanks for joining us.